I've had a couple of conversations in real life with people lately in which the subject turned to virtual conversations, uh, or particularly social media conversations. Um, uh, more than one person has ad, uh, expressed to me that going on Facebook in particular, which probably for most of our, our demographics, that's where our, our social media tends to be, um, you know, there's a certain population on Twitter, and the young kids are all about the Instagram and the Snapchat, but, uh, or even the TikTok. But I think for probably a good, good chunk of uh, middle-aged folks like, uh, like me and, and probably you, um, Facebook is where the grown-ups hang out and have conversations. And again, I've had more than one person express to me that going on Facebook has resulted in them feeling anxious feeling angry, feeling uptight, um, that it's, but, but they can't stay away from it. You know? Yeah, some have given up. I know some who've said, I'm, I'm out, I'm, I'm done with this. I've taken a, a, a strategy myself in which I, I strategically limit how many posts I can see every day. I've got, I've got a limit that I set, 15 in the morning and 15 in the evening, and that's all I, I that's plenty to to see instead of just scrolling and scrolling. I also um, have a particular diet for um, who, who I'm, uh, I'm seeing. I have certain folks that I, I don't see as much as, as others, their posts. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, whatever your, your strategy may be, you know, the idea that uh, social media should be an extension of our identity in Christ and, and uh, and what we're consuming should always be an extension of our identity in Christ, whether we're talking about social media or Netflix or you know, what YouTube videos we watch, whatever, um, what crisis counseling videos, you know, you're watching this because it's an extension of your identity in Christ. So um, I, I've, I've seen the good and the bad in social media on Facebook. There was a post I saw this week fellow from my hometown, who I never really knew real well, but um, is from the generation before me. Um, I knew him in high school. He was one of those guys who would hang around basketball games and, and just a, a really respected member of the community. Who One of those guys who just knew everybody. And I saw him put a, uh, and he usually has Facebook posts that are rather humorous, um, lighthearted, short, I saw him uh, put a post up this week that was uh, not quite as lighthearted. It was a, a strong political statement, although not anything over the top, declaring support for one candidate over another, which, hey, in an election year, you're going to have people who put up yard signs and say that there's a certain candidate they support. And from this political statement, it, it shot to the top of my news feed. Facebook has an algorithm that... Uh, 150 posts will get you to the top of an algorithm. Like there's, if there's a conversation with 150 posts, you're gonna see it. So it, it shot to the top of my, my news feed. And yeah, I'm not exaggerating, it was 150 posts. Uh, a few people with like a lot of posts on there. Many who I knew, um, again, this is you know people from my hometown, so people I either knew or knew of were having intense arguments about pretty much everything. You know, race, COVID-19, I mean, those are the two hot button topics today, right? And, and I, I was looking at this kind of like you would watch a car accident or a train wreck, which you really shouldn't take pleasure in looking. And I wasn't taking any pleasure in looking at this, but also I couldn't avert my eyes from it. It was just stunning reading what people were saying to each other. I didn't see anybody say, oh yeah, you changed my mind. I've, I've flipped on this topic. I didn't see that at all. But I saw plenty of uh, anger, uh, hurt feelings, um, really personal insults, venomous insults, family members who didn't just disagree, but like disagreed violently with one another. Um, in one case, there was like an accusation of a like some some nefarious business practice one person made against another another brought up a suspension someone had received as a coach or something it just you know, all this stuff that really is quite ancillary to a presidential election but you know what as i was reading through this thread i'm thinking this isn't unusual 
this is life in 2020, isn't it? This is this is what what our world looks like now. People angry, hateful toward each other. Um, also on my Facebook news feed, I happened to run across a post from um, a pastor, one of the pastors at uh, St. John in Plymouth, Pastor Nathan Metter. And here's, here's what I saw him post on Facebook. Measure twice, cut once. For every COVID and political post you create or respond to, spend twice as long in prayer. Seek the repentance of your heart the welfare and direction of our leaders, and the healing and protection of our neighbors. It will surely bring about a far better result than the vitriol and panic that seems to rule the day. Yeah, what a what a profound idea. That's the kind of thing you might say. You might click like on that and then just go about your business. But you know what? I challenge you to really do that. If you spend time creating or responding to a Facebook post that's not about um, uh, first day of school, but a post about politics or pandemic, or religion for that matter. That's fine, go ahead and, and say what you gotta say. But then kind of tax yourself with spending time in prayer, exceeding what you have, have done. And so set the timer if you got, okay, I'm gonna write this post on Facebook took me two minutes. Okay, now I'm going to spend four minutes in prayer, which actually really isn't that much, quite frankly. Well, what am I going to pray about for four minutes? Well, Pastor Metter says, first of all, seek the repentance of your heart. So, yeah, ask for forgiveness. We've, we have plenty to ask for forgiveness for. Um, ask that God would make your heart uh, receptive to his word and receptive to loving others. Welfare and direction of our leaders. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, we, we criticize our leaders. And we, I mean, we, we live in a country where that's okay. But uh, notice in Scripture what it says to do about your leaders. I, I got I to gotta remind myself of this all the time. We pray for them. So, you know, as it, as it turns out, we're in this hyper-partisan climate where chances are, if you fit the statistics, you either have a lot of um, dislike for our president or a lot of dislike for our governor. You know, they're different political parties, right? So you have an opportunity, both cases, to pray for both of them equally and to lift them up in prayer that they would do God's will, that they would know God's will and, and use his word to guide them, that they would both have wisdom in, in what they do. And we, we have some opportunities there. And then finally, um, the uh, the the healing and protection of our neighbors. Now, here's where if you're like, okay, I have four minutes to pray, or man, what if you spent 10 minutes on a Facebook post? Now you've got 20 minutes to pray. Uh, your neighbors. Yeah. Where, where should you start? I got an idea. Your Facebook friends list. <laughs> Even the people you've blocked or snoozed. Go down and, and go down that list of names and just think about what they have going on in their life. Yeah, this... This person is um, is in Kenosha this week, you know, for for whatever reason. I pray for them for their safety and well-being. Um, this person who always has these infuriating posts that I disagree with. I know they've they've got kids going to school, and I'm gonna pray that their kids would be healthy and well, and that uh, their their school year would be a blessing. Yeah, you know, that uh, you just go down your Facebook friends list and pray for. The people on the list. Now, some of you watching this, maybe if you haven't turned it off yet, you're like, Pastor, I know Facebook isn't for me. Well, let me ask you this. Do you still find yourself um, in positions where you have anxiety based upon the expressions of others? And I'm not saying that um, others don't give you cause for that. But for, uh, for every moment that you spend anxiously thinking or talking about what what others are thinking or talking about spend a minute in prayer yes. spend some time just you and god talking through these things there's a couple of practical benefits one is i think you'll feel better just from a self-regulating standpoint your emotional health your mental health will be stronger 
The other factor, though, let's not neglect this. It's not that prayer is just some kind of um, way to trick our brain into being happy. Prayer actually works. <laughs> we believe this, that we do have a real God who is present and listens to our prayers and will act upon them. And there's some joy in knowing that we are accomplishing something every time that we go to the Lord's table and the Lord's altar and and go to the very throne room of heaven with our prayers. So God bless you as you continue to navigate this time of uh, intense uncertainty and knowing that we have things that we are certain of. God bless and keep you.